is Warrior Women in Business, episode number 40. And before we get started with our exciting guest that's here to support Mental Health Awareness Month, specifically around supporting women and mental health awareness, I wanted to introduce Warrior Women in Business. For those of you that don't know us, a little bit about myself and our mission. So I'm Jasmine Sandler. I'm the founder and host of Warrior Women in Business. Warrior Women in Business is a division of JS Media. JS Media is a 17-year-old branding and digital marketing agency that serves the needs primarily of female entrepreneurs, helping them to develop their brands, grow their careers, and grow their businesses. Warrior Women in Business is a media company under the marketing agency that provides the, this podcast, which is meant to be truly valuable and educational, as well as a series of events both in New York City and Beverly Hills. We also have a fashion line that supports and empowers women in business. We have this month uh, a Warrior Women in Business shop exclusive, 10% off all of our products, as well as any sale, 5% of that sale goes to our partner, the Mayor's Fund, which disseminates in New York City clothing and support to women and families. So with all of that being said, Again, my name is Jasmine Sandler, and I'm very, very excited to have my friend and guest on today. I've seen her career really develop and her passion for supporting women in joy and energy. Uh, so I welcome Theo Amato to Warrior Women in Business 40. She is the proud founder of Joyful Services, and she's really about helping women embody their feminine energy. So, Fio, if you could just simply say hello to the audience, go off a mute for a second. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm very happy that you're here today. So, we have uh, we've gone to a very much a fast track, intensive format by demand of our audience. So, for those of you that are online, this is going to be a 30 minute intensive, and after that, I'm going to be making some announcements. Uh, if any of you have questions for either Fio, myself, or the Warrior Women team post the podcast, you can always, always email us through warriorwomenbusiness.com. So all of that is now out of the way. I want to get started on the questions. So Fio is an interesting woman. Um, <laughs> she, she is, um, you know, I find her to be just this light of spirituality that really helps women. But she came, like most of us, uh, from a corporate background. So my first question is, Fio, you came from this corporate background in Latin America, and now you're helping women, really supporting them in the world of joy. So can you give us a, a summary of where you came from, you know, physically, your corporate background, and why you are here today in this mission? Thank you, love. Yeah, it's been a journey. So my journey started in Peru. I work uh, for the Constitutional Court for six years, focusing on human rights. Then I transitioned in pursuit of making more impact to the corporate. Had the master's in business mm -hmm. and thinking like, oh, I can make an impact here because in the court there is so many political issues, I couldn't make the impact. But again, in the corporate, it was also, um, yeah, my heart was not really fulfilling the sense to really benefit and make the impact I was really looking for. On top of that, I was 30 years old and I was starting to be very, very sick. My digestion system was not working. I was really, seeds were growing in my breast, in my womb, so many um, issues. Uh, my hair was falling and so many issues and most of women, we struggled. And in silence, we suffer. So at some point in my journey, I couldn't take it anymore. And I decided to embark on a journey to kill myself. So I traveled the world for two years and live in different spiritual communities, like uh, learning and trying to understand different holistic alternative ways to heal myself first and trying to find that um, balance inside my body, first of all. Um, but life happens and I came back to Peru, I started my journey and I decided to just found uh, Warmipura, a nonprofit organization supporting women's empowerment and focusing in helping like a woman who lives in the Andes in Peru, indigenous women. So long story short, life had a massive uh, challenge for me. I witnessed the suicide of a dearest, dearest, dearest lover friend 
and that really put me out of everything and in that was the, the point in which I reached the whole and I it's like I understood how many of us as an entrepreneur very powerful successful women we took that role she took that role because she didn't have the support for her mental well-being and mm. that was the point how I now bring all these things about joy is because I went through so much pain and I saw so much pain in every single group of women professionals non-professionals that are, are really making a great impact but unfortunately it's not that um support they need for their mental well-being so that's what it's all about bringing joy to our lives to be able to really like tap into that joy that is part of every single of us so let me that's no that's wonderful and i think all of the women that i come across Theo, in, uh, in my world that go from executive to entrepreneur, they have that similarity where they, they feel this pain and they notice physical things that are happening to them coming from this mental anguish. So, and then they want the change. So I completely understand. So my next question is around when women come to you and you support women, right? Um, do they, how open are they about their, um, mental health issues. And I, I, well, I'm not a psychologist in any sort of way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I'm not out there to talk about mental health issues from a diagnostic or, you know, clinical standpoint, but just from the standpoint of what we know generally in terms of maybe anxiety or depression or suffering, how open are they to talk about that? Or do they come to you with a different story? Like, what do you hear, you know, related to the, the pain that they're having with their mental health? Mm, yeah, that's, that's really, really key, love, because there is so much shame. There is so much shame to talk about our mental health issues. So um, particularly in Latino community, women of color, it's so much pain and it's so much shame also because we suffer in silence. And even when things happen, like my mom, everyone around say, don't say anyone that this happened to you. And I was like, oh, in, on top of that pain, you have so much shame. Yeah. But what I do in the in the groups of women I support is like creating a safe and sacred space for them to open up is when really. So creating these women's circles, these uh, ceremonies, these special events in which we know that we are going to be held in a sacred container among women in which we finally can express. And in those containers that I support, you have no idea because people start to open up in a way that we are all in tears because my story touched the heart of the other women and she feels vulnerable to just share and express. And it's so amazing how the power of women getting together and sitting in a circle, knowing that is just to express what is present for me without anyone telling me you should don't feel like this, you should, no, it's just, these places for me are amazing because in these places, in these um, in these um, circles of women, really they express, and most most of them, at least, if I cannot say, the ninety five percent are taking antidepressive and having yeah. anxiety and panic attacks, and that for me was like, <gasps> was like a cringe inside myself because that's what I stand, and that's what made me be in service. There is a different way loves there is a different way yeah no i see that i mean you know in doing some research before this episode we found out that uh, we sent out a, a little stat yesterday that 75 percent of female entrepreneurs who we deal with you know they suffer from some type of anguish meaning they are going to a therapist or like you mentioned taking some type of prescription medication for some type of related disorder. So it's very interesting and certainly something that <laughs> that needs to be uh, taken care of. And this is why we've, I mean, I personally see an explosion in trauma coaches, female healers, I, they contact me every day. And I think it's good, but it's just a matter of providing the right education. So with that being said, talk a little bit about, just give me, give us one example of physically of a, of a program that you deliver um, and how, what, what's your role there? Okay, um, I have a beautiful program that I designed. It's a 12 week immersion to awake your joyful self. And it sounds beautiful, okay, but joyful self, it's something that it belongs to us. 
So through these 12 weeks, what I do is really guide to a woman inside their own body first. Because even thinking before, oh, you need to meditate to be chill. Like, no, my dear, you cannot meditate and go in your mind if your nervous system is completely like a dysregulated. So this 12 week, week program is focused on go inside your body, in your energetic body, chakra by chakra, learning to tune in and to feel and release the pain that is a storage in every single part of your body, physical body, energetic body but also to align in yourself. So the, 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 the massive transformation is, can you imagine whatever you are creating right now, even if your nervous system is dysregulated? After this 12 week program, you can really experience your nervous system, again, be regulated because now you have the tools to regulate yourself. So can you imagine what you can create from this place of fullness, of joy, when you're, you are able to, okay, things happen and you are able to navigate and be back on balance. And also to really like have this understanding that as females, we have so much power. We can create life. A baby can be, you know, completely creating our womb. So that's the power that you can access just through these somatic practices through these very feminine embodiment practices that will really tap into that feminine energy to support your transformation. Okay. We don't need to seek power outside, my dears. Yeah, I agree. So, so quick question on that. So for, for women that are you know suffering now, so this is Mental Health Awareness Month. In fact, it's the tail end of it. However, I think it should be an annual thing. I think uh, yes. we, this could be a whole huge discussion. But there, you know, there's a general problem with it. <laughs> and I love that you talked about shame because that's, that's the problem there. So, but what are some like practical, two to three practical things a woman can do who's, doesn't matter the race, honestly, but someone that's maybe suffering in silence or it is, cause it does directly negatively affect their business or career. So what are just some of the things they could maybe do now, you know? Now. Yeah, okay, yeah. wherever you are, like um, we were talking about, wherever you are, the most important thing is like uh, you need to reach out for help. Mike. Reach out for help is, is, is the most important thing because I know we suffer and we struggle and most of us have these deep abandonment wounds that we carry from childhood. We didn't feel safe. We never feel safe since we were child. So then we grew up and here we are, full grown up woman. So the most important thing is I will say reach out for help and then is very practical, like uh, wherever you are, for example, right now, like uh, sit and feel your feet connected to the floor. Mm -hmm. And the most important practice that I always teach is grounding yourself, understanding that the air, the energy of the earth, of Mother Earth, is always supporting you. So we cannot even start to try to these breathing techniques. We see a lot of in, in social media, but if you're not grounded, if you don't come from this understanding that whatever happened, we just need sometimes to lie down on the floor, wherever you are, it's just trying to allow your body to feel safe and feel safe and supported by the air. Having always this understanding, wherever you are in the chair, okay, I'm supported by the mm. chair. I'm supported by the ground. And little by little, we start to, is a little bit this you know like a survival state in which most of entrepreneurs we live and yeah. i include myself because i see you know we start to hyperventilate it's so much to do the to-do list we never end we never end and then we need to jump and i'm like okay even five minutes of just telling to my whole system i grounded i'm supported i belong Everything is fine here and now. I'm safe. Even repeating this, I'm safe right now. I'm safe right now. Mm, absolutely. They have so much soothing and calming effect, my dear. So much. And we can do it whatever, you know, we are. You know? Yeah, no, I okay. agree. Yeah, there's a lot to that. So, I mean, so especially with entrepreneurs, you're right. It's like we're always, I actually was leading a women's circle for something else last week. And I brought up the, the point about chasing time. Because people are afraid to talk about their problems. I'm like, does everybody have this problem? Everybody raised their hand. Because we do. 
And so I agree with you. It is about, um, and my mantra is like taking more time for yourself as a female entrepreneur, because we're always giving to others, you know, instead of taking the time for ourselves. So I love that you said that, that gives you the kind of the um, permission, right? To, yes. it gives you the permission to do what you're talking about. Take your time. I love that you talked about putting your feet down and feeling grounded and almost like staying in one spot and staying in the present without having to become a meditation master. Because I feel like a lot of women think, well, I need to learn about meditation, I need to learn about the, all these things. And that's a nice, simple tip that you gave. So I, it's wonderful, you know? It's, a, it's important whether you think you have a mental health issue or you don't, you just, maybe you just feel stressed out and stress is a killer. So I agree <laughs> on that. Um, okay, so, so let's talk about other organizations, right? So Warrior Women in Business, if you've watched the podcast, and the, the events is all about collaboration, collaboration. I always like knock people over the head with this, right? It is not about competing as women. This is about collaboration. So I'm wondering, Field, what other organizations do you feel are doing a good job? It could be a coach, it could be a national organization that are doing a good job of supporting mental health, like mental health, whether it's mental health awareness or supporting, um, providing like therapy for free, like some things that we do in the city. Just what are or some organizations you might think of that are doing a good job to help women with mental health? To be honest right now, is like I have a bunch of, of organizations that I follow, but the most important thing that I will to shine the light is that is so many organizations led by women mm -hmm. who are focusing on these. And yep. something that is very important is also the focusing of these organizations, like uh, Warmipura, the organization that I'm the, the co-founder and CEO. We focus always on trying to bring this awareness that our well-being, our mental health is key because it's well. Health is well. And I love how more and more organizations are talking about how wealth, because we are wealthy women, but we, we, our wealthiness doesn't come from how much money we make. It's of course, that's just a consequence, but the most important thing is turning inward to create that wealthiness inside ourselves. So I really like I start to see a lot of these, like bringing so much awareness that is not about the money, it's not about the income, it's not that will come as much as we go inward to take it our because we are the main assets. If we are an entrepreneur and a, a solopreneur, it's just like that we are our own assets. So I really celebrate because there is more and more um, women owner business, um, a lot of organizations that are led by women to support women because we know there is so much needed. And you just mentioned something very important like a how we can really, really start to create a world in which we support each other as, as female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and as sisters, as sisters, like as seeing the other as sister. And even if I see you, oh, you are 10 steps forward that I am, just celebrate each other, just celebrate your sister because more you rejoice, more you celebrate, you are closer to be where that woman that you think, instead of develop jealousy, yeah. just celebrate and I say, mm -hmm. yes, yes, sister. <laughs> Creating that energy, that vibration that will put you there in a, in a snap of a fingertip. So I think so that's something that I would love to just shine the light. Celebrate your sister, celebrate the woman that you see that is farther than you, because if you do that, you are creating the causes to be there in a shorter, shorter period of time. All right. Well, you I, know what? That, <laughs> that is what we're all about here. And that's why I wanted you be, to be on the podcast, because I see that you do that. And I want, you know, I want women like that. And I want us, we, start, we want to start converting women into doing yes. that because, you know, the more that we support each other, honestly, the more the better mental health we'll have, right? Because we'll have a bond and that's what we need as social beings. So I think that's what this mental health connection is all about. So now that leads me to my next question to you, which is give us an example. And I ask this of all of my guests. Mm -hmm. Give us an example from your corporate background, actually, on a, either some type of situation you came in where you had to overcome as a woman and do something outside the box or a situation where you had to help another woman? Oh, yeah. 
I have so much memories about that time, but I think so one of the, the hardest for me was when I wore mostly, mo I was mostly, most of the time, the only female there. Mm -hmm. Big judges, you know, a full room with men and you need to explain and you always need to face mansplaining and that they see you as a piece of meat instead of listening the important things you are saying. They are just seeing you with that. Uh, oh my goodness, disgusting. <laughs> but I remember like that uh, because I was there and I was really like, uh, yeah, shaking inside. But you know, like I'm presenting and doing that, like uh, for the practitioners, because at that time I have interns working for me and practitioners, and they were afraid to go into, to, I don't know, get a, sign, a signature or something. And they were really afraid to go there. And I remember like uh, just sharing my story with them, like uh, telling like, uh, yeah, this is what I feel. This is what I, do. and if you please, and always saying, because they are younger, they are starting. And I always say, like, if something doesn't feel right, please leave that. Throw the papers and just go. Don't think that you, because he is a, a somebody is in power and you feel, you know, like a, always, yeah. I think so when we are in a position of power with a man, um, you feel like, oh, I cannot do nothing. And I always say that because I experienced that. Always, if something feels that is not right for you in that room, in that office, just leave it. You don't need to explain. You don't need to say nothing. You just go and come to me. And I feel like that was I was able to say that because I was there. I was also an intern, and I needed to face these very uncomfortable um, sexual harassment situations in mm -hmm. which... Because I don't know, it's my tendency. I always was very fiery. So I will say no and I would just leave and then of course crying, you know, in the <laughs> corner. But I feel like that was very important. And I always say that like, uh, whatever you are in a position that you have interns or, or women that are like a, a starting in their careers, always tell them that they don't need to like uh, let their power they are confronted with the men in a position of power yeah. that they can always leave the room and just don't say nothing because not so many have the, the ability to speak up their truth in that moment and say you know what so just leave the room but don't think that because you need to finish this project this work with this person you need to push yourself to be in a situation yeah they that need to be right. put you in danger yeah and so i know i love that you bring that up i actually was interviewed on a podcast with a woman in the UK who's doing something similar to Warrior Woman. She's our next guest and she's so powerful. And we were oh. talking, she asked me to tell stories from the past. It was nice to be a guest. <laughs> but my point is that um, half of what we do at Warrior Women is support women in the arts. And that's where I see that because that's where the this problem still exists in a much bigger way. So I hope that my 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 female musicians, my female creatives are listening today. Because I love how you said, you know, stop, you don't need to certainly, you don't need to succumb to a, to a supposed power. You need to embrace your own power. So I love that you said that. So next question, what does the term warrior women, like the poster behind me, mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i love that i mean if i am here it was i felt so attracted to this warrior woman so when i think about warrior woman i will say these two archetypes came to my mind as a, as a female embodiment practitioner i work with the archetypes of the feminine of the goddess so mm. for me these two archetypes of warrior woman the the warrior woman that is very fiery very powerful that speak up that is loud that take a space and it's this energy of fire fearless and sometimes even wrathful right yeah but at the same time the other at the same is the other archetype of the warrior woman that is peaceful that is gentle that is very in flow and that just effortlessly make things happen and it's just like a kind of the peaceful warrior and the more fiery warrior so that's these two archetypes that I love to think about when I think about Warrior Woman, because that's very important that we understand that our feminine energy is not one thing. Mm -hmm. So it can be everything like in nature. Think about feminine energy is nature. So it can be that fiery, that wrathful. And sometimes we need to do that. We need to be very wrathful. 
but some other times and most of the times feminine um, leaders need to also understand that it needs to be more in flow, more gentle, more loving, because we really need more loving support in the business we are running in this world. So also tapping in that energy of more loving kindness and flowy. I love it. Sophia, you <laughs> just hit the nail on the head. It's the best answer I've heard because I, the big issue that I see in business in general is, is this need to not just compete, but to attack and defend and attack and defend like a warrior, but not in the right way. So I love that you talked about love and fire and confidence and all those things. But I think also I would add on to that because I just really love what you said, which is being honest. I feel that in business, people are too ready to risk everything to make money and win. Mm. And I think we need to re we need to remember that if we're trying to do something, like I'm trying to do something with warrior women, I'm trying to breed collaboration, but also breed honesty if we're trying to make a change in the way that we do business as women. So I love that you talked about that. It was really a great answer. That's, really that's very it. important, love. That's very important because mm -hmm. as you say, everyone is about thinking about the money because everyone is coming from this dysregulated nervous system in which you are in survival mode thinking like i need to make this money i need yeah. to make this money so instead of coming to let's connect love let's see how we can co-create thinking of tapping into the source of abundance of the whole universe we are just thinking of, oh i need to connect because i want to pitch i want to make a sale and I, I want to i want i want something from you so very important deep connections happen when we really want to connect knowing that together we can join efforts to co-create and tap to the source of abundance of the whole universe instead of thinking like a, with a little small in mind that oh i can take something from you but no blame love it's because we are all living in survival mode in this reactive mode that is you know constantly making you like a be just like a <laughs> absolutely that's the right facial expression <laughs> I love it. That's the exact right facial expression for you. So um, we have a few minutes left. Now, I just want to tell everybody uh, one thing that, you know, my guests and my partners are working on is really supporting each other. So with Theo, I actually know her programs on a personal level. They are really wonderful. I would say my testimonials from two perspectives. One is just like the sisterhood piece getting the, like meeting other women in the room and and really then feeling that energy and being able to be vulnerable because you're with other women. Because again, this is about mental health awareness and we can only do it together. So as we're women in business, we like to support our partners. And that being said, for any of the workshops that Theo has coming up, we have discounts and I will provide that information after the show. But that being said, um, tell us about an event or maybe two events that you have coming up, any dates that you want to throw out, any locations, any events that you have coming up? Yes. Um, something that I really love to, to host, and I'm hosting monthly uh, cacao ceremony. I remember you participated in one, Jasmine. Yes, so I now did. I'm so committed because that is creating like a community. So cacao ceremonies are a beautiful way to really connect with uh, our love and open up our hearts. And I'm hosting these events in Huntington, where I am. That's in Long Island, living. for those and of you that don't know. That's in Long Island, yes. Huntington. Yes, and I will update you with the dates because I yeah. don't have it on my mind. And no, I that's don't okay. Three days. We'll be sending and then, out something And then the other. Yep. Yes. Right. And then the cacao ceremony and the self-empowerment ceremony, that is something so transforming. It's a really like a life experience for you to go into these regulation practices. So it's a two hour um, workshop, self-empowerment, because it's about you getting your power back by learning to regulate your nervous system and learning to create that sacred space for yourself in wherever you are in your office in your house but really knowing what you are doing to just 
allow your nervous system to relax and believe me from that place can you imagine what do you can create <laughs> Boom. yes that's that's exactly what we want so um so just a couple yes. of notes thank you for sharing that yes i have been witness to one of her events it was fantastic and feels a great facilitator and it's hard to be a facilitator at, at events she does a wonderful job but anyway so a couple things i wanted to mention so first and foremost is uh, for Fio, any questions, any questions for me, info about Warrior Women in Business and her events, we're going to be sending out our next newsletter. We'll have an edited version of this. Also, all of the information, the ways to get in touch with Fio about her events coming up, the calendar. Any of you that are currently yes. on the lot, any of you that are currently on the live streams now, um, if you just want to reach out to us, all the information is there on the live stream. A couple things I want to mention before I let everyone go. Again, this we we're here to support mental health awareness. Where Women in Business has had multiple episodes on this over the years. Um, if you watched, unfortunately, during COVID, I actually worked directly with the mayor's office and had multiple episodes with um, representatives from the Suicide Hotline in New York. So we're all, and we've done lots of events to do that, to support women. In, and uh, this episode, I think, is very, was very important because mental health, you don't want to sit in silence, as Fio mentioned, you want to come together with your sisters, you need a bond, you need a social circle, and you need some guidance. And I think, you know, through what we're doing here, and with Fio and other organizations, it's very important for you, like Fio said, to reach out. So, you know, feel free to reach out. If you're, if you represent an organization that does support women in this way, reach out to Warrior Women in Business, we'd love to have you on the podcast. And again, we give a percentage of all sales of our fashion products to the mayor's fund that disseminates that for mental health programs. So this is just, I want to show just one of our newer designs. This is a warrior woman who's oh my goodness. just like Theo said. So she has a sword. I have one, I so, love it. So this one, she has a sword because as Theo mentioned, she's a badass, but she's also elegant and beautiful. And it is like, that's why I loved your answer because that's where we're all about. It's about strength and beauty and how they come together. So I hope all of you want to experience one of Fio's workshops and get involved. Um, the other thing I want to mention before we sign off, if you noticed I have new headphones and new microphone, I wanna really thank um, MXL Microphones for being our first Warrior Women in Business podcast sponsor. Uh, when I met with them, I, everybody knows I support the music industry. And um, they, I kind of told them about what I do in music as a singer and speaker. And then I told them about Warrior Women in Business and they were like, what's that? They got all excited and they said, we want to support women. We see there's a problem with women in the music industry. So they're happy to share products. Um, so we are going to be having lots of musical events coming up this summer in New York City. Look out for that. And uh, two guests that are coming up, I'd like to mention before we sign off. So we are having um, Pinky, who runs an organization called Net Women in London, in the UK, doing all the things to provide collaboration and support for women in business and executives in London on June 7th, same time, same channel. June 14th, Sandy Sembler, she's so fierce. Um, so she has a program called Sacred She. You're gonna hear all about it when she comes on. Any uh, updates are all on warriorwomenbusiness.com. So with that being said, I wanna thank Theo for being just like so vibrant today and really ending Mental Health Awareness Month with a bang. Um, I hope all of you got a lot out of this. And again, Theo, Theo I really want to thank you for being on today. So I'm signing oh, off again. Thank you, love. Jasmine thank Sandler. Thank you, love. You're welcome. Jasmine Sandler, host, Warrior Women in Business. Please reach out to be, me and the team and be a part of the community. And uh, so that's it. See you next time. Same channel, same time.